Professor, time to you. Thank you very much for introducing. Thank you. Yeah, I'll explain to you a bit how I, all over my professional life, integrated systems into new innovative products. Everything what is hand in a, in a hand or you are using to control or to guide is a tool. So it's mainly about tool design. It is always physical. My very first job was doing the redesign, the rebranding of the Nivea tin can. This happened 1989, 1990, so about 30 years ago. And there you see that even the shape of a tin can is important. Later, then Porsche invited me in their research center and development uh, facilities to do a new product development for their Group C race cars, the wind tunnel testing thereof, and I also did a very new electric forklift these days by the help of computers. So the integration of computer-aided styling together with engineering software in a concurrent closed process chain. So my idea is here depicted as the methodology in order to have time savings when generating new ideas based on technical packages. So you always have to integrate lots of different systems into a new product. And by that way, you give a purpose-driven shape. It's not so that you are doing or styling a mere appearance. It is the shape which changes the functionality of the object. And so it not only what looks better works better, it is also the emphasizing of the better tool which is getting customers attracted to a new product. I was also showing this at the Geneva Motor Show uh, about 25 years ago. And here you see the front and the rear bumper I designed on a very special non-uniform rational B-spline based software. And of course, I did the strategic thinking and writing of the whole idea which is behind that new methodology, which is currently, after 30 years, still active all over the world. The first car I was lucky to be uh, participating in was this uh, V8 water-cooled uh, 928. I did there the valve covers, and this is very modern already, just like the 911 air-cooled one. There I was participating in the Targa, the three-part retractable glass roof. And you see in both cases how small the cars are. So small car, low front area, very good aerodynamic. That's exactly what innovation and design is all about. Myself, I always then concentrated further on air, or fluids later on, like water, and also pneumatic robotics. Here you see the complete design of the corporate identity via the various channels of a company which is engaging in long-lasting capital tools for the automation industry. Mainly you see here components like valve, valve terminals, piston, actuators, and robotic arms. In this way, you are not only shaping the customer's identity in their brains, but also prospective customers, when they are out shopping for new products, they see what they are getting. And even the products in their function are directly referring to the core part of the brand. So you have a uniform appearance, which comes from the logotype, even the typeface, the materials, so new materials are also co-developed with the chemical company Bayer in Leverkusen in Germany, down to handheld power tools, be that electrically or pneumatically driven. So you have tools which are explicitly tools, but as said, everything you hold in your hand with a purpose has a meaning. And that meaning can be the advantage or disadvantage for the user depending on also the ergonomics. With handheld power tools, of course, it is of utmost importance that you have a very good ergonomic design behind. And for the future, you can modularize it and make multifunctional add-on tools so that you have savings in both for the customer because you buy only one handheld centerpiece and various functions can be added. And on the other hand, you have 
the less resources used in order to make these different functions come to reality. About 15 years ago, the handheld power tools along also I have done design for sport shoes, three different lines, a very ergonomic functional one. It's not fashion design, were displayed in a big museum. They are still there in the permanent uh, exhibition. And in the relation marketing, this company for industrial automation is using air as the force and the power to drive. So for the relation marketing, it was quite clear to design Balloons, you have seen an upside down balloon which is inverted in order to attract attention. Here you see balloon baskets, usually they are since about 300 years woven of wicker. And for this uh, gas balloon, as tradition in Germany is, we are powering it rather with hydrogen uh, than helium because you are having then about 8% more lift. So you can go for very long endurance races and this was the attempt to circumnavigate the Earth in the jet stream belt. We rented the vehicle assembly building from NASA and did a test inflation in Cape Canaveral in Kennedy Space Center in order to prove that our concept is working. Later, uh, it was extended to a hot air airship. Also here, the so-called chase car, the four-wheel drive truck I designed, and it has a composite container, very lightweight, so it can go on the one hand fast and on the other hand also in the air. Um, Festo Swiss Prospective Concept Projects, you see here, these are flying pneumatic structures, meaning inflatable aircraft, where even the profiles uh, of the wing and uh, the um, different ailerons are changing their curvature according to the pressure changes applied. So you have a fully pneumatic actuation. The Vision Air Network which I designed is uh, coming along with several examples like air texture. It is a neologism from air and architecture. It is not an inflatable building. It is a fully actively controlled building with no columns inside. You have ambient air pressure, no, no bulkheads are necessary and everything, the columns, the walls, the windows, the roof, even the ropes are load bearing by pre-stressed compressed air. Air aquarium is an inflatable, so here you have air as high pr higher pressure of air inside and a water torus as foundation and this particular material is the very first transparent wrapper. This was the aforementioned co-development with Bayer, the chemical company, and this special transparent wrapper can also change its transparency depending on the energy of the sun shining onto the surface. Later, at the Art Exhibition Hall of the Federal Republic of Germany, there was a great retrospective of 50 years of Italian and German design. Uh, my works were chosen for the area of industrial product design, and of course the famous car companies of Germany contributed uh, with their products as well. This, what you see, is an artificial muscle. It is pneumatically or fluidically driven, and I transferred these ideas of corporate identity over to the new technology center, uh, which has technical textiles for sunshades, like uh, huge sails, and a pneumatic roofing, where you have a continuously shadable uh, sun protection depending only on pressure variance in between the cushions. Uh, the membrane itself is very long lasting, it's made of Teflon and can stay probably much longer than the building in itself. Uh, the glass facade is uh, three times glazing. In between you have a rare earth filling uh, which is argon as noble gas. So you have a very high insulation value just like a thermos flask. But I also designed uh, the tables, the the table surfaces, it's the same color than the stationary, which is a very light, chic uh, gray, and also the light-emitting diets were designed to be in the company color blue, mobility of utmost importance, because the company is having subsidiaries in 176 countries, which are connected via an electronic orientation system, and also about 20 years ago, 
Nowadays we have a home office, but this one then was already modular and could be easily transported. Uh, a, uh, as a sign to enter the technology center area is this single stem umbrella, which was for 10 years the world record. It is about 999 square meter coverage on a single stem. It was then only uh, superseded and overcome by the umbrellas at the occasion of the World Exposition in 2010 at Shanghai. So you see here that we, with material development, you see the technology center, you see the aquarium, you see the gate, the umbrella, and the air texture building in the headquarters as it is currently in Esslingen nearby Stuttgart. Of course, we did also fun projects like uh, this year's end uh, giveaway. This is an office uh, sleeping pillow, which prevents keyboard imprints on the forehead in the case you are resting on your desk. And of course, the communication design has to be designed in the very same way as the products in order to fit to the identity. So the company brochures in order to express the vision behind uh, the corporation is as important as uh, the visualization of the different values which are expressed through the companies and the different business areas. Down even to the very product language, so at the end when you display the corporate products, you need to have the same language in the communication design in order to be fully in line with the projected identity. And uh, even the activities of the company like lifelong learning, the qualification, the interface and uh, the teaching modules which are physical all line up to this very corporate design down to the icons for pneumatic circuitry and even annual calendars, of course, business cards included, are completing that particular look. And I hope it shows that it is not just uh, an appearance, there's more behind. Therefore, in the year 2001, I was awarded Design Team of the Year and Mr. Itsuro Inaba from Sony, the inventor of the famous Walkman, ha handed over that radio trophy to me. And one year later, in 2002, I handed the trophy radios over to uh, Apple Design, which was then the design team of the year. So it shows you that even for long-lasting durable capital goods, you can be in between Sony and Apple in the global scope. Of course, this comprises uh, advertising and fluorescent uh, tubing ads on buildings, just like in the micro areas like virtual stack beetle. It's a very small insect and here we tried by uh, virtual reality to do microscopic small actuators, then later build small robotic animals like a six-legged bug which can pull around only pneumatically, no electricity involved in this particular case, or shoes which allow to store and release the kinetic energy while you are walking. So this is a great piece in order to really move quite quickly and energy efficient, kind of a sports shoe. And small air-driven vehicles like uh, go-cars with air power or fully pneumatic muscle sprung mountain bikes or for kite boarding special boards which uh, depend on the cornering and your weight. Also for kind of tricycles, which is a more complicated bicycle, it has a three muscle air powered engine and the cabin for two people and the grocery swivels depending on the speed. And from these projects of Vision Air Network, special graphic design posters were designed for traveling exhibitions all over the world, just like our airfish, which are smaller scale, uh, penguin derived from the airship and here in this case you see it has uh, ionic drives meaning there is a plasma ionic jet in the rear propelling the airship and on the wings uh, you have oscillating plasma ray propulsion so this is more or less uh, like flapping a wing although you cannot see the turbulence of this motion. 
So very, very modern innovation where technology meets industrial design thus creates innovation. Just like with an improved hot air balloon, but it's not air in this case, it is hot water, but it is water gas, it is steam, so steam powers uh, the balloon. It is generating thus more buoyancy as compared with a hot air balloon, but less than a gas balloon filled with helium or hydrogen, so it's exactly in between. And uh, one of my highest flies concepts is still currently working on the International Space Station. I did this for the uh, Airbus Space Agency, and they commissioned uh, projects for greenhouses on Moon, Mars, and the Ariane Payload Bay, the automated transport vehicle. And the fourth one went on the International Space Station for growing vegetables. Here you see, again, a project which has to do with kiting. It is fully controlled, it's autonomous flight in real time. So the wings can stay in the air and you can even generate from the kinetic energy uh, more power than you usually have. The methodology behind that is always looking at a natural paragon and then use uh, modern imaging tools like scanning electron micro microscopy, you do computer-aided design, you use biologic, you have kinematics, you do create a digital twin, you prototype, you make finite element analysis, you have computer tomography and uh, also high-speed biplanar x-ray and then you do motion infrared capture and then in the end you have universe kinematics and you end up with a robot which is fully pneumatic has no electronic or electric parts and therefore can work in a completely wet and watery environment without having problems. In this case, you see the motion capture of uh, water drops flying through the air being caught by the arm. Later, again, end effectors, more or less, these are the hands of a robotic arm. They are point grippers, line grippers, and spatial grippers derived from biological paragons. In this particular case, it is the kinematics of the bird's beak, which were used to initiate the innovation of the different uh, grippers. All of them are 3D printed, meaning additively manufactured from a very special titanium alloy with very, very thin walls. So it's the thinnest we could produce then. By that way, we were able uh, to create the lightest weight for the given functionality and have also the big advantage of uh, getting better agility because everything what's mounted to a robotic arm, the weight counts. Then we created a morphological box in order to innovate further over the point, lined and spatial gripper in order to have one which is fully universal. And this universal gripper allows you to actually configure the gripper according to your application. So there are several types of fingers which you can just slide onto the center piece. There are about five different uh, variants and you can have up to six fingers. So two to six fingers you can variably uh, configure. And this gripper um, can be positioned on any robotic arm because it has a standardized uh, interface and by that way you can also automatically switch between linear and radial grip and through this innovation you have a truly industrial product which stems from industrial design thinking methodology only. It was done by industrial designers and not by engineers only that you understand this, so it is not from engineering to industrial design. Here in this particular case, it is from industrial designers only, and then engineers used it in the applications. The functional prototype milled in conventional subtractive industrial processing leads then to the different uh, application scenarios as depicted here. In this way, you can use it for any industrial pick and place scenario. And this is, of course, a product which is shown in the trade fairs globally and also part of a normal robot application. So you have the special 
three grippers which are 3D printed on the one side versus the conventionally fabricated modular six single one on the right side. Of course, this also was shown in a museum here right next to the Art Nouveau and Art Deco furniture along with the natural paragon. In this particular case, uh, it was a grasshopper leg. You see here from uh, furniture, the toucan beak, which is having a very hollow but lattice-filled structure. And this is uh, then leading over to the telemetrical design. And in the telemetrical design, this I would have done initially here as a presentation, but I was asked by the Hong Kong Design Association that I should rather uh, focus on design in general. Therefore, maybe another time I go into this. I could give you a presentation about any of the charts I've shown you uh, separately. And this way, I was coming then last fall from Singapore, and we had there a very big uh, new design studio at the National University of Singapore, so I, and also my robotic lab in the basement. I just packed it up, but before I went into an exoskeleton from Hope Company for the Singapore Civil Defense Forces. It's very interesting because no electric either, so all the components I showed you in the beginning are serving here as a mechanical control real time. No electronics, no battery, no computers involved. So I picked up everything, it was quite a lot, 70 cubic meters, seven metric tons, shipped it over to Hong Kong. And here we are now in the new integrated systems design studio at Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, Clearwater Bay, nearby. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Folloma. It's very eye-opening to see all the beautiful work, and I particularly like the sentence that you said, everything that comes with a purpose has some meaning. All right, that's, uh, that's awesome. So we've seen quite a few questions from the audience, and uh, I would like to ask you one by one. First, uh, do you have any tips for us in combining design and tech and business? It is very important that the combination, at least the attempt to happens from the very beginning of the project start. Uh, when the project already has been completely engineered, industrial designers by no chance can fix anything. And as we know, engineers usually make, to, uh, make things functional, but most likely they are not good looking, so they don't sell. Okay, so the look and the function at the same time and start it from the very beginning. beginning. So okay. the industrial designer is trained to work with engineers and make the product functional and good looking. Or as I said, the good looking tool is the better working one. Wow, that's deep. That's very deep. It's not, not easy to find. And then uh, we have another few questions. And then the second question that we have is, uh, what do you think are the most beneficial factors, beneficial factors that design thinking can bring to the business market? Again, it is uh, the concurrent new product development process where industrial design, industrial product design is in the very center of the innovation right from the very first beginning. Meaning, as soon as ideation starts, industrial designers along with engineers are driving the process. Mm, so that means working along the way, isn't it? Yeah. There? Usually, you know, designers, I, I know that, all over the world for now more than three decades, they are just called in when it's already too late. They have something which works, but it's so ugly, they realize they can't sell, and usually you, you cannot fix this anymore. Ah, so I you see. have to start in the front. Oh, okay. So, okay. Basically, is to have an ending at the very beginning. So you just yeah. work backwards so that you get the answer, both aesthetic and also the function. Yeah. Usually, you must not take care of the aesthetic as all as a designer because when you're in the very beginning driving the innovation process, you take care of the function, the right materials, which are necessary in order to manufacture, to fabricate the pieces and through the fabrication technologies adhering you, get, you are getting also the look, looks predetermined and that way you have an aesthetic product which is working well. So the aesthetic comes with this process by itself. 
Oh, okay. So if we got the right function, and then that aesthetic will just slowly yeah. come in. Yeah. Oh, wow. I feel like I've attended a lecture, mini lecture. That's so nice. So one last question is, uh, what do you think about the challenge of developing business, especially in the environment of Hong Kong? Huh. Wow, <laughs> that is a difficult question. Shall I be upfront? You know, Germans say always what they think very much unlike Asians. You know, as long as you don't have an industry, you, you have no chance. Oh, wow, that's too direct. Do you, do you further, can you further explain uh, on that? Hong Kong must definitely revive its industries, otherwise there is no future. Um, I was coming as early as 1990 with the um, Japanese race team to Hong Kong. And this was really the heydays for me here. I still remember Nathan Road and everything. There was so much industry still. And now when I returned 30 years later, there's hardly any industry left. So as long as there is no mm. revival of any industry, there is no good future. You must have industries also for the arts and for design because only where industry grows and flourishes, there is good art and good mm. design. This all goes together because the industry makes the money and the industry spends the money on design and art. Mm, right, right. So it's like having the right soil for the plants yeah, and exactly. the seed to come you in. You can't right? say I leave away uh, the dirty industry and we just right. concentrate and focus on design and the arts. This is not working. Right. Thank you, Professor Foloma. That's definitely a valuable insight and I like your bonus in Zorda particular. So uh, thank you so much for coming and giving us such a valuable sharing. And we have a compliment cert for you. And uh, we'll now invite, yes. Pastor thank you Mike. for inviting. Yeah, thank you. We'll now invite Ms. Cynthia Wong, DXT Project Director of Hong Kong Designers Association to present the cert to our speaker. Yes, it's a very insightful and full of wits as well, I would say. So let's look at our camera. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yes, please take a seat. Thank you so much. Thank you.